Dr. Bharadwaj is additional professor in Department of Community Medicine, Ames, Jodhpur. He is also coordinator of School of Public Health. He have an interest in vaccinology, nutrition, infection diseases, research methodology, and geriatrics. He is also vice dean research in Ames, Jodhpur. He is also secretary, UNESCO chair, bioethics. Okay, thank you so much. So, uh, at the outset, I would like to extend my heartfelt thanks to the organizers, to National Institute of Hydrology for uh, this opportunity, uh, which they have provided uh, to me to present our work from uh, School of Public Health, All India Institute of Medical Sciences, Jodhpur. I think the topic and the time is very apt for the current time when we are talking and when we are uh, observing this unprecedented time of crisis due to COVID-19. And I think the very important part which uh, now we are observing today during this pandemic time is that uh, we need to build our system in a sustainable way because these pandemic and epidemics will keep on coming. But we need to develop a robust system uh, of public health also in terms of uh, like, for example, today's topic of wash, water, sanitation, and hygiene, so that in time to come, uh, the, the system which is already built on with the examples of states like Kerala, we would be able to fight uh, these kind of pandemics with greater vigor. So for the next uh, 20 or 15 or 20 minutes or so, I'll be taking you to our experience and a small case study, which we did in school uh, through School of Public Health. But uh, I would like to, you know, again, uh, give this disclaimer before I start my presentation that I know that uh, the National Institute of Hydrology is more a technical institution and they deal with developing technology. Uh, but for next 15 minutes, I'll be talking something in terms of behavioral sciences, because what we feel is that when technology and behavioral sciences, they join hands together, then only the results would be at or how we feel the results should be successful. And I think uh, we all know through COVID-19 pandemic that beside having a very good or efficacious vaccine, very good uh, laboratory uh, parameters or laboratory tests, along with the efficient or efficacious vaccines and uh, drugs, the most important thing would be COVID-19 appropriate behavior, which will help us to come out of this pandemic. So uh, for next uh, this uh, uh, 10 minutes, I think I'll take you to three things which uh, we did in School of Public Health. And that was uh, the concept uh, I'm going to share with you in the next slides. Some of the best practices in this case study. And uh, last but not the least is uh, those initiatives which our school took to promote strategies for adopting water sanitation and hygiene practices by engaging multiple stakeholders. So uh, the concept which I'm going to speak would be on 3S model, and we call it by the name of uh, Swachha School Sustainable Model. And the second concept would be something to do with the, uh, with the scarcity of water. Actually, in Rajasthan, more so ever in Jodhpur, there is a huge scarcity of water in rural areas. So how to utilize a safe water so that uh, one protocol which our school of public health developed by the name of drop and some stakeholders matrix uh, in uh, planning implementation and sustainability so to begin with these are the two concepts which i spoke about uh, two or three minutes earlier the first concept would be this 3s model which is swatch school sustainable model and the second one is this drop the abbreviation which we thought we can develop and which we applied in one of the school in uh, in a, in a nearby area of uh, Jodhpur. So if you see this uh, poster or this IC material, which is uh, being seen over here with the name of 3S model or Swachhata sustainability model, you find here that there is a name of a principal who definitely is uh, very uh, influential in any school. But at the same time, we have shown there these Swachhata scenics or these are those uh, the, uh, the most important stakeholders which need to adopt that behavior if we want WASH promotional strategy to be implemented in community. And then next, you have seen that 
how a kind of a SOP is made. Though these SOPs are there, I, I believe everywhere in engineering schools and colleges, in schools like uh, All India Institute of Medical Sciences. But we develop this small uh, this uh, pamphlet, which is having this uh, uh, standard operating procedures for using these uh, water when there is a scarcity of water, along with the cleaning of tank, which is important for these school. So you may ask us that though we are uh, the uh, we, we are said to be the premier most institutions when it comes to Medicare, then how come uh, we got our uh, interest in the wash promotion strategies? I would like to share you friends uh, that uh, share with you about the School of Public Health, which started in 2017 in Ames, and there was a mandate that the public health should be the forefront of any All India Institute of Medicine. As you know, currently, in the terms of IITs and IMs, we do have a lot of aims in India. So in School of Public Health, we have these public health graduates community to understand the need. We call them as situation analysis so that they should understand that what exactly is the problem. Sometimes technology can only help when we know the ground reality. So they were put to community to know what exactly is going on when it comes to water sanitation and hygiene practices. and. They were not surprised because this is depicted in most of the places in rural areas across country. They found that most of the schools, the condition of toilets, that was in very shabby condition. They found that there were two major issues and the two major issues were that there were toilets, but the toilets were made, but there were no water facility. And I think all of you, all of us will agree that this is in most of the places, I'll, I'll say most of the places in rural areas, because I know we visit all these being from community uh, public health area that these toilets have been constructed just for the sake of constructing these toilets. Or in the second uh, photograph, you must be uh, seeing that if water is available, then overhead tanks are not there. So these are two basic facility, uh, basic problems or uh, which they could find out that either there was no water facility or if there is a water facility, or that means these taps are uh, installed, the water was not available. The second problem of behavioral, as I was talking earlier, that it's not just technology, behavioral sciences is very important. The cleanliness, because that was not there in the behavior, so that was there, and most of the classes were dirty or something. So our school uh, public health graduates, they thought, why not to use some kind of uh, engagement multiple stakeholders matrix to take them on board if we want a kind of a sustainable solution. As I said, that one time solution is not the uh, solution to the problems. Currently, there should be a sustainable solution. So there is a science, we call it as a st uh, stakeholders mapping matrix. And uh, we, uh, people from public health who work in implementation and sciences, we use usually this matrix and we identify people who are there when it comes to their influence or power and also with the interest. So it's a kind of a scientific approach which we have adopted on X axis and Y axis. And you can see this is a two into two table where we actually specify them and most of the organizations do it. It's not just stakeholders metrics for WASH. It can be used across uh, organizations, be it NIH or AIMS. So if you look at these four corners, I'll take you one corner one by one and tell you how we tried at the ground to engage these people who are having different influence and different interest. So let's take the media who are having a high influence. If you look at this diagram again, these are on the uppermost left one. So interest is low, but they are highly influential. So when it comes to media and to tell them about wash, there's nothing which attracts them. As we know that media most of the time is attracted by those news which are more catchy. So uh, we need to engage these media partners, which are high in influence, but unfortunately they are not taking interest. Along with some of the academic institutions, I'll tell how we engage them. So what we did, we in behavioral sciences, we say that if we try to uh, you know create a kind of an awareness campaign, it should be on a platform which gives visibility to that. The same thing is happening in COVID time also, and we all are witness to that. So we did same things. We organized some of the activities like the largest hand hygiene lesson. So it was organized in one of the rural school, which I just uh, showed you in my earlier slides. 
and we try to invite these book of records partners so that there should be a kind of an interest in media people should understand that wash or water sanitation and hygiene is an important part and we need to understand that learn that even in schools in rural areas of country as i have written here academic institutions and thanks to organizations like national institute of hydrology who already have interest in these uh, as i have written that they are highly influential but they are not having interest so in aims uh, jodhpur or in jodhpur actually we were lucky to have organizations like indian space research organization isro so we uh, you know approached them uh, with the ideas and we asked them request them that can we join hands together to to uh, generate evidence because as i said earlier in my earlier slide that was for masses but if suppose uh, we need to go into academics or we need to go to the policy makers we need evidences so we request them why not to map all these wash services across country and correlate them with the uh, incidence in terms of disease maybe like for example diarrheal diseases or uh, or the kind of an economic utilization of fund so i'll be happy to share with you that uh, our our papers and we we we've jointly worked together with uh, the um, indian state uh, research organization with the help of geographic information system or gis mapping we tried to locate the number of toilets across country and through idsp or integrated disease surveillance program data we tried to find out that how the incidence of disease uh, that uh, is brought down in these areas and uh, uh, it was um, the, the result was really uh, very uh, nice even the papers were read in parliament by the honorable ministers of finance honorable ministers of health when they uh, when they showed that wash is an interest area in this swachh bharat mission which is also the uh, premier program of government of india is doing fairly well so as i told you earlier in this uh, stakeholder matrix that we need to adopt different strategies to invite them or to engage them so in my earlier slide i told you how we try to invite academic institutions how we try to invite media who are having their high power but they were not having a very much interest in these strategies so uh, side by side we uh, again go to the next uh, block and that was who were already having high influence and high interest but they need to have a hand holding and as i have written here these were serpents or these were ngos or non governmental organization or philanthropic organization so what we did uh, these uh, our school uh, uh, scholars from public health uh, they made it their uh, you know kind of a uh, of a mandate to meet these people daily to give them hand holding so they were so you can ask us what is the kind of a hand holding which they were giving to these serpents so they were actually connecting them to different agencies so these people were high influential high interest but they were not ready to start or initiate this activity so somebody needs to initiate them somebody needs to take them on board so our school or school of public health took that initiative they connected them to engineers they connected them to the municipal corporations in jodhpur to uh, to get them into this system of that how to make those toilets where less water can be used or how to use uh, those overhead tanks how to get those overhead tanks in the schools what are the uh, you know cleaning facilities which can be organized or arranged with the help of volunteers the third one was students and as you all know that because these were the actual partners these were all those uh, uh, stakeholders who are going to be benefited with these so we tried to bring them together so these were low influence low interest people and because we know that as when it comes to the behavioral sciences it's a kind of a reinforcement every time so we tried our school all india institute of medical sciences tried that we should provide them a regular continuous uh, supportive supervision to help them in uh, wash strategies the teachers were also taken on board because teachers we know that they are having high interest but unfortunately because of lot of issues in rural areas they were not giving that uh, having that influence to get the management uh, to uh, to to get them on board to have these wash strategies so if you ask us that what exactly we did after that we uh, tried to chalk out a kind of a action plan and we tried to find out that who are the resource people who will work in different areas 
So the first and the foremost problem which we found was that though there were toilets, but the toilets were not there for uh, girl students or these female students. So what we tried was that we tried to find out the volunteers, philanthropic in Rajasthan, we call them as Bhamashas. So we tried to find out that who are there who can, you know, provide some kind of funds. So to tell you the truth, in a country like India, uh, there are many organizations or people, the only effort is to be taken by somebody, some organization who take them on board and they can only donate one time. So we need a kind of a sustainability again. So for toilet construction, we, we took them on board, we took engineering departments, even in uh, people who are from engineering section, they helped us out and we also take help or took help from the municipal corporations. We took help from Gram Sevaks for, uh, you know, all those paintings, plantations. So all these activities were done. So if you ask me that, uh, you know, if I need to combine the entire presentation, because that took around uh, 90 days for this entire activity to be over. It was a three months activity. So I'll say that these were two important steps which we took in implementation of wash promotion strategy. The first one was behavioral change and it took year, years to do it. But in three months, we could bring some kind of change in these people. But as we say that if we want to change the behavior, we need to give some kind of uh, uh, some kind of help or what we call it as there should be a kind of technology which should help us. So that was that infrastructural or technical support. So if you look at this in these photographs, so what we tried was uh, they were people, they were motivated, but they need a kind of an engagement with the uh, with the uh, uh, with the correct people. So we connected them to correct organization to those from where uh, they can build all these. You can see here, this is that uh, underground tank in Rajasthan. We put water into this underground tank. So how these were built, how the, uh, you know, SOPs were made, the uh, the kind of accountability was put that how this can be cleaned. So it is something which was a highly technical part, but we invited our engineer friends and colleagues and uh, other organizations who can help us out in that. The construction of toilet, definitely it was a difficult task for us, uh, but uh, the, you know, the organizations or philanthropic organizations could help us out. It was an important part, I think, and uh, you all, uh, we all will agree to that, that these organizations, they can support us only once. But to sustain them is the responsibility of these schools or stakeholders. You can see the change. I always feel happy when I am taking uh, these uh, kind of uh, experience sharing in terms of behavioral sciences uh, that you can see the change in both these photographs that uh, these changes were uh, very much uh, relevant and they were very much obvious and the kind of uh, uh, the response which these students did was marvelous. So what exactly was 3S model? If you uh, ask me to summarize uh, my presentation, I would say it was that all work uh, which was to be conducted, we put it under the principle and uh, all uh, schools and uh, they were made a part of that. I, I would like to share with you is that this model is now being implemented in so many schools altogether because the strategy is already been made. We have shared it with the rest of the schools and uh, they are using uh, this uh, uh, matrix. Uh, they're using uh, this matrix to engage different stakeholders. So I'll end my presentation with this uh, engagement framework. We call this a, as FIETS framework. And if you look at this FIETS framework, these are actually five areas uh, where uh, we need a kind of an engagement or handholding. And that is financial, institutional, environmental, technical, and social. And I think uh, as we were you know, discussing earlier, National Institute of Hydrology is more or less a technical partner, uh, maybe in, in cases like WASH, but, but organizations like School of Public Health and those who are uh, civil society organizations or community partners, they are more or less social and environmental partners. So we need the engagement and handholding with all these organizations to have a kind of a sustainability framework for WASH promotional strategies. So these were, uh, you know, the kind of uh, uh, outcomes uh, which we could get when we engage all these people from the very beginning, that we had a better communication, understanding of understanding. And when we engage them from very beginning, so they are very much there when these informed decisions are taken. And I think this also help us 
to have a kind of an enhanced partnership. So thank you so much for this uh, opportunity uh, which you have provided to me. Uh, I'll be happy to take questions, but I think uh, for today, the, the uh, experience sharing was a kind of a case study which we did for three months. Uh, that was for a period of 90 days where we could see and observe the obvious changes uh, which uh, the engagement had brought to the lives of these students who were there uh, and we, we can understand that everything was existing. And that was an effort with School of Public Health too. So thank you so much once again to the organization, to NIH for giving me this opportunity. Thanks once again.